Okay, I thought I would do a video today. It's the middle of winter and I haven't been able to get out metal detecting at all. So I thought I would do a little video of how I set up my e-track, which is pretty basic. And uh, maybe it'll help you find some stuff if you're just starting to learn the e-track. Um, I think this will be pretty helpful. Uh, there's my Sunray probe, which I'll show you in just a little bit, my pinpointer. Uh, with, of course, the little switch there. And I just use the stock coil that comes with the e-track. So we'll go ahead and turn on the machine here. I do have a cover that I do put on it. Um, and I've taken that off for this little video. But always put your cover on there because it'll keep your machine nice and clean. This button right here does give you um, backlight. So if it's starting to get dark out, which I'm hunting a lot when it's starting to get dark, I'll flip that on. Um, this switch right here, your detect switch, you can see currently I'm showing kind of my open areas here where it's uh, not black. I like to switch this to kind of an old person uh, setting. It'll give you your numbers really large. Do a quick demonstration of that here for you. There you can see it 1347 at the top. Now if I change that, you can see your numbers right there, okay? Much easier to see because a lot of times it's hard to see the screen and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and put the headphones in so that we don't get any extra sound uh, until I want to show you some things. I do run this uh, with push this up arrow and you'll see a plus three right here. I like to run that at plus three. I like to put it in kind of automatic mode. This will get you to some of the modes. And if you go over here, you can see I'm in auto right here. Okay, that's where I like to be. Some guys will change that. Every now and then I'll, I'll put it so it's not in auto and I'll crank it up all the way, but I seem to got, get a lot of extra noise. And to be honest with you, I find just as many coins and some of the experts I've talked to they hunt in automatic mode. Okay, uh, we'll go back to our, kind of our detect mode screen here. And this is, of course, your depth zero to about 12 inches. You'll see here that I still have the basic coin mode that's set up when I got my E track. The only thing I did was notch out and open up this area up here in the top corner that will if you have that blacked out you won't be able to see some of the silver coins some of the half dollars so i like i open that up a lot of guys will go ahead and open this up way down i haven't found a need to because to be honest with you even if there's a, a deep silver coin or any deep coin you're still going to hear it um, and those deeper coins are going to be not real clean signals anyway like a one inch coin will be and i've kind of learned what it's telling me so here's some of my settings uh, I like to have my silver really loud and high toned uh, so I can hear it and you'll, um, if you set my, your settings up like mine, you'll hear that also. Okay. Uh, if we go over here to the sensitivity, again, back to auto, um, and I've got it at plus three, which is going to give you the best balance and so forth. Threshold, I like to have that at 22. My volume limit is 29. Volume gain is 29. Have my response normal. My tone ID. I have that on multi. Some guys will change that and do other things. I still like to just kind of be in the normal mode. Um, conductive sounds. Variability 25. Limits 30. So always, and that's if you push this arrow here, it'll let you change it. You know. Back up to the top. Threshold pitch, I have that at 28, which is pretty high. My recovery deep is off. That doesn't mean you're not going to recover deep things. Um, you'll still recover a lot of deep stuff. That doesn't mean to recover deep targets. Recovery fast, I have that on. Trash density high. Ground is difficult. 
my noise cancel I have at 9. Um, this is kind of your screen for your preferences, how you prefer to look at things. I like the contrast at 16. My pinpoint mode is normal. Sensitivity, show, show your sensitivity, I have that on. And show mode info, I have that on. Display timeout, I have that off. And there's your master reset if you want to go ahead and master reset. I've known some guys that have kind of messed up their machines a little bit. Um, doing weird stuff to them, trying to make them better by watching videos. And I've been out in the field where some guys, I'm finding silver coins. I've had them come over, listen to my coin. They can't even hardly hear it. But on my machine, I can hear it good and loud. I had one guy actually do a master reset out in the field. And then he could hear his coin. So um, Mind Lab has really set this up to be almost a turn on and go machine with some adjustments for how you want to hear coins and different things like that. Okay, uh, we'll hit this button here to go back to our detect mode because we're down here at the end basically. This will bring us back to the screen and again I like to kind of hit it in old man mode so I have big numbers show up. Okay, here's your battery which showing I have a full battery up there in the corner and Again, if you uh, once you get to know your numbers, you'll know your coins. This is a silver quarter, and I'll unplug the headphones here so you can hear how high of a tone that is. I like to hear that high tone. And again, if you have a, a quarter, it's going to hit in that 12, 46, 47 range. Here's a silver dime. Okay, since it's out of the ground, it's going to hit pretty high at 46. This will be a 44 also, a lot of times maybe a 45. Your deeper targets, when you have a deep silver dime, it's going to hit around 45. You're going to see 46 every now and then. It'll be a real quick 46 and it'll go back to 45 maybe. Very rarely will it stay on 46 with a silver dime unless it's like right under the surface. Here is a wheat penny. It'll be a lower tone slightly and your numbers will be in the closer in the low 40s. Okay. Here's silver quarter again. You can hear how that's a lot higher. Here's the, the wheat penny again. Okay, again, these are air tests. The coin's not in the ground, it's not turned on its side or anything. One thing you do, always want to pinpoint. When you go into pinpoint, you're going to be able to center your target right in your coil. Okay, and a lot of times when you do that, if you have a silver dime, you'll see a surge of the numbers up to 46 as you're pinpointing and it'll go back down. That's how I always key on a silver coin besides the depth. Um, if it never hits 46, unless it's really deep, sometimes I don't dig it because I nine times out of ten or more from the many years I've done this, I can guarantee it's usually not a silver coin. Um, but I still will dig them if they're deep just in case, but a lot of times it's not silver. You always want a ground balance. I didn't show you that, but I'm not out in the field to, sh to show you ground balance. As soon as you turn your machine on, you want to ground balance it. It'll help take out any power lines that might be around or other metal detectors in your area if you're uh, out with a friend or something. Okay? I want to show you my pinpointer. This switch right here, it's pointing down right now. You can see when I uh, pull this back. That means I'm on my pinpointer now. A lot of guys will use the uh, Garrett pinpointers and some other pinpointers, but I'll tell you what, when you get in a hole, if you have a nail or something, it's going to gnaw out when you get down in there with this thing. This will let you hear the exact same tones on that coin. And if you think you might have a silver coin, but it's real iffy, and you may have a nail, it'll gnaw out when you get on that nail. 
okay? I still hear it. I can even pinpoint with it, so. Okay. I can still hear the same tones as with my coil, which works great. I suggest you get one of these. They don't make them anymore for the E-Track. You can find them online, um, but it's a great tool. I like having it right there for me. Um, and I've even picked up a second one since they stopped making them just in case this one were to go out and I have to send it into Ralph at Sunray uh, to get it fixed. I won't be down. Okay. He does have parts. Ralph does to... Sorry about that. Ralph does have parts to fix these things. Uh, if you have something go out in the switch unit, uh, you can send it in to him. He'll fix it. Um, but he's just not producing them because it's just getting too expensive. Um, with the way Mind Lab has made some changes and the shafts he told me are just um, way too much. Okay, so again, the Mind Lab E track. If you have any uh, other thoughts, please check in later and watch my videos. I thought I'd show you the picture of this dust cover really quick. Um, it's a great thing to have Velcros in the back, and you want to be sure you have one of those on your detector. Another thing you always want to have is uh, a pair of knee pads. You don't want to get your uh, knees all wet if it's cold outside and wet in the morning on the grass. And also a good digging tool. And I always wear a pair of gloves also. Just keeps your hands clean as much as you're in the dirt, especially if it's been raining or something. Um, that's about all I go in the field with. My knee pads, my gloves, and my e-track and a digging tool. Um, it's a quick out the door I keep everything in my car and again since it's so darn cold and I haven't been out for two months since after Thanksgiving I thought I'd go ahead and do a video that uh, might help some people that follow my channel um, to make do some settings on their e-track or if you are thinking about getting an e-track or just purchased one um, hopefully this will help you out a little bit